Budget and Finance to order on Tuesday, April 9th, 2013. Let the record reflect um, Vice Chair Roger Toomey is present, um, Councilor Aquino is present, Councilor Vasquez is present. Start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Councilor's first item agenda. Can we get a uh, motion to accept the minutes from the March 26th meeting, please? So moved. Second. Motion is made and seconded. Any discussion? See none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Okay. Um, there's just a lot of stuff on the agenda. Let's try to get. Um, If you don't mind, we take something out of order, document 7013, and so I'll start with the chief and uh, so with the fire department. So moved. Second. Should be made second. Take document 713, 7013 out of order. All, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yes, have it. Councilor's document 7013, fire department staffing, financial review and strategy. Um, I put this on the agenda because I was concerned that we have not heard any real movement about the status of having lost a safer grant um, and not really hearing of any uh, plans about what to do in its stead. I thought that we could have the chief and the, the uh, uh, director of the finance department, Mr. Arnell, discuss to us a little bit about what's the status is of that. Either one of you guys can go first, Mr. Yeah, Jack Bergeron, Chief Lawrence Fire Department, 244 Street, Methuen. Uh, we still are currently operating a, a safer grant that was awarded to us back in the beginning of 2011. Uh, that grant has a two-year time window. We're supposed to run out this uh, past March. We did file for an amendment to extend that grant out to a point where we would have, you know, utilized all the funds that were made available in that grant, and that'll take us to the end of August. Last summer, we also applied for a, a new grant, new safer grant. Uh, we were rejected by FEMA <coughs> for a, on that new application. Part of the reason is that we still had quite a bit of funding left from the previous grant. And our goal is, uh, you know, once again that the, hopefully the grant period opens up in a timely fashion for us, you know, the timing be right, that uh, again we can apply for another grant this year. There is a, uh, you know, by the time you actually make that grant application and the application period ends and the time that the awards come out could be as much as uh, anywhere from three to six months. And again, we don't know when that grant application period will open up again. Are you guys having a discussion on what you, what you guys might do if you don't get that grant? I've submitted uh, three different budgets uh, to the budget and finance director. Uh, three different scenarios. One would be, uh, you know, what would happen to the fire department budget uh, if, again, you know, assuming that the city had no additional funds to uh, supplant what we'd be losing through the grant. A second one actually takes an account picking up those employees at the end of August and funding them through to the end of June, you know, 2014 but not filling any of the unfilled positions that I have right now. I have seven vacant positions. Mm -hmm. And the third would be fully funding, you know, fully staffing a department from August 24th on to June 30th. Is that, can we have a copy of those? Actually, uh, what I would expect, again, you know, it's part of the budget process. That budget is still in formulation. Uh, and I think it's gonna take some time. I don't know, I'm sure you must have a, um, some, schedule as to when, you know, he actually, again, has to meet with all the department heads, which he's in the process of doing. I shouldn't be talking yeah. for you. Yeah. And then I'm, I'm sure what, well, I'm not sure, but my guess would be that after having done that, you could pile, you know, a complete budget that could be sent up to the council. Uh, yeah, and, that, and that's the current process we're going through, but I think that with this department specifically and the 600 
you know, not, not having the grant again. I think we have a specific interest in it. So I don't know if, if Director Reynell, if you could speak to getting a copy of those. Well, there, as, uh, as the chief just mentioned, there are three different proposals. None of them are really, uh, uh, they're just part of the discussion at this point. I know the, the mayor has been very uh, 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 strong in his insistence that we, uh, we, we fund public safety to full extent as possible. So we're, that's why we've asked uh, uh, the chief to submit three different versions. We're gonna try and fit one of them into our, our scenario. So uh, that's something we're working on now. It'll be uh, it's, it's several weeks away before we get it uh, in front of the budget, we, uh, maybe front, in front of the council. Uh, but we still have uh, several uh, uh, sessions left with department heads before we, <laughs> we have it in in, uh, in total, and then we're going to start uh, you know, balancing it. With this budget, it. with this budget specifically, do you know um, if, if you have any any um, with the fire department specifically? Do you have any contingency on how to pay for it if we don't get another grant? What do you mean by contingency? Yeah, we don't we don't have yeah uh, you know, we have to. We have I don't to, mean as in a yeah. contingency fund. Yeah. I mean as a plan. Do you have a plan? We, on how to pay for it? Our, our plan is to fund as much, uh, uh, we're trying to fund his, his department uh, uh, similar to what it is today. Okay. Uh, and, uh, and that's why we've asked for, for the three scenarios. Uh, primarily he has uh, uh, safer money, safer grant money will last until the end of August, August so we have about 10 months uh, in, in his budget request. Uh, uh, of funding those uh, 30 firefighters for the 10 months has a has a certain value. Funding 38 firefighters and uh, filling a, a vacancies in addition to the safer grant employees would be a little higher number. And of course, uh, not funding any of them at all is the worst case scenario. Uh, and I don't think anybody has an appetite for that one. But but it's one we have uh, on the table so we can see what the numbers look like. Yeah, so I'll just I'll say it a different way. So there was an article mm -hmm. in the in the in the local paper. And it's been talked about far and wide that we don't have this money to pay for the firefighters. Mm -hmm. um, everyone in the community knows we get calls from constituents about it. So then how, what do we tell constituents about whether or not there's a plan to find funding for it? Uh, we're working on that plan to fully fund the fire department as, as, uh, as high as we can. Okay. If I could put that as a, that's our plan. Councilors, any questions? Pastor Jimmy? Actually, um, that's right now. That was a very interesting question <coughs> that Council Rivera asked. If we pick the middle item, which currently states, I believe they have 31 firefighters, I believe, on staff now based on the safer grants, is that correct? Yes. And the seven openings. But if you, can you give us an idea of like what kind of money we're talking about to be able to fund these at least these 31 fully? I, I don't have it with me. Uh, Chief probably knows what the number is. Uh, Just to get an idea, are yeah, we, talk, no, are we talking like a couple of million dollars? Or? To, to fully fund all those positions, so to get a little bit off your question, but to fully fund to the staffing level that was budgeted last year, the total cost to the city additional costs would be like $2.75 million. Okay. Now, to my budget, that translates to 2.1, but that would be funding also those seven vacated positions as well. Okay. Yeah. So, so those figures are approximately about 2.1. Yeah, so, so we're talking- Without those seven, without filling those seven, it, it brings it down to, to less than two million. Uh, if I recall, it was probably like 1.7, 1.8, somewhere in that, you know. Okay. I just want to get an idea of what kind of money we're talking about uh, to be able to at least staff it as it exists today. Right. Okay, thank you. And so, so now I got two of the three scenarios. The last scenario, what, what's, that, what's the amount? If we don't get any new funding, if we're not able to find any of the funding, what, what, how much is that? Well, yeah, just to repeat, right, the, the 2.75 would be a cost to the city yeah. to fund what I had for staffing at the beginning of, you know, in our, our last year's budget, the budget that we're presently in right now. That would include funding for the seven so, unfilled positions that I have. So let's say we can't even raise the one eight. How many bodies does that put on the street for us? Uh, that would, again, Less than 2009? That, again, I, I would lose all those people that are now funded under the SAFER grant. 
That's 31 people? Yeah. So the official, the official answer is we're working on it, Mr. Hernell? Yeah. Yes, uh, yeah, the, the budget will be, uh, we're working on it now, and, and it's, uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, decisions this mayor is going to have to make before we present the bu budget to the city council. But uh, I know he's very uh, uh, adamant about preserving uh, public safety. Councilors, any other questions for the chief for Mr. Hernell? Well, I, I just want... It's a little unsatisfying because it's kind of an important thing and I'd love to be able to tell people they're thinking about certain things. Even firefighters that we talk to, we see them out, you know, out on the, in the community. Be nice to say we're working on something. But and again, we're definitely working on it. Uh, uh, again, the fact that, again, I submitted the three budgets. Uh, we've looked at the different scenarios. I'm sure, I'm not sure, again, I'm, I'm guessing my expectation would be that the mayor, you know, with the budget finance director, they're going to look at every city budget, you know, from every department and see where funds might be available. They'll be looking at the revenues. Again, I think right at this moment, it's a little bit premature. Uh, what I've been telling, you know, my five hundred people that I serve with is I'm cautiously optimistic that, you know, the funds will indeed be available to at least retain the people that we have. Councilors, anything else? I just have one other question for Mr. Ionello. We, we've just finished our third quarter. Yep. And just off the top of your head, uh, I uh, I like to look at the revenue streams coming in. Are we ad are we in advance of what the what was expected in the revenue stream or behind? Uh, we haven't run those reports yet. We're uh, we're finishing posting for the March 31st period, and we'll be preparing those port reports. Uh, we're preparing them now and into next week, and then you, we'll have an idea. You have really have no idea what what well, it looks I, like. They seem to you know I haven't seen anything to, that uh, shocks me at this point, but. Uh, um, we will have some financial statements uh, for three th the period nine months end of 331. But there's nothing that you can recall that will give you a well, yay type thing. Uh, well, there's, there's, there are actually there are quite a few things that are giving us a yay. We're doing, uh, 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 we've got our tax liens uh, filed on time. We've had some pretty good collection rates. Uh, so things are, think there are some, some positives in there. Uh, but, you know, I'd like to wait till we see the nine, uh, nine months ended statements to see what we have. Right, you can get a good feeling from things, how things are going by that third quarter statement. You know, as part of this budget process, I mean, we're, you know, uh, this is where all the uh, all the work happens, and uh, and it's and it's a it, many many weeks it takes to to analyze everybody's budget, to analyze all the revenues coming in, and see how we you know we have to balance the budget. We yeah. can't present an unbalanced budget to the city council, so it's an extremely uh, demanding uh, process, uh, and. Um, and there's a lot of variables in there. Uh, right now, we're working with a House One budget. There could be a, a House Two budget uh, you know, at any point, which will change our scenarios again. Uh, it's a, there's a lot of balls in the air when you're trying to balance this uh, a city this this large. Uh, and there's a lot of uh, components that comprise the, the budget making process. And uh, you know, we have a, a limited staff, so we we. Uh, Fortunately, we're pretty or we feel like we're pretty organized so we can get a handle on it But it's still a lot of it's time-consuming work Great. All right, so once that once that third quarter is complete You're gonna to see to it that we get a copy of both the revenues yeah. and the expenditures Yes, for that right quarter. just like I did the first two quarters of the year. I'll do it again probably in another uh, I believe we'll have the financial statements completed by next week and they should be ready for the council the right. week after Well, just so, just for clarity. <laughs> it's not just enough to send it to them. You actually got to put it on yeah. the agenda It's part of ordinance. okay you, you got to come and present I'll, it to I'll, us. If you and let me finish yep. my thought real sure. quick. So that's that's an important piece. Mm -hmm. You have to come down before us and present it to us as part of the ordinance on the quarterly statement. And actually, there's something on the agenda this evening about the half year review. Mm -hmm. um, so I was hoping we could touch a little bit on that. But okay. yep. um, it's I know I know it seems like it's just enough to send us the, the document. Mm -hmm. It's not. You got to come and present it to us because um, we may have questions and mm -hmm. and want to do it in an open in an open forum. Sorry about that, Council. Mm -hmm. And also, in line with the budget, I, I believe Council Rivera has said this before, when the budget is presented to us, it would be very helpful to us as, a, as, as counselors to be able to identify line item by line item how much was actually spent 
versus, you know, in a, in a particular department versus what we're asking for in the new budget for that, that particular department. Uh, it would give us a good feel for what's happening, uh, make it a lot clearer to a lot of the councils rather than just guessing. This budget will have uh, uh, two or uh, will have FY 11 and 12 actual expenditures and then uh, through uh, a certain date in FY 13 Great. when you receive the budget. Uh, and then, the, of course, the, re the FY 13 budget and then FY 14 uh, requests. So it's going to be a little, uh, it's not going to, might be a little smaller print to get it on a page, but the information is going to be contained. And that's what we've provided to all the department heads this year. So uh, when they said so they can submit their budget, uh, they can see the last few years expenditures for every single line item. Great. So Thank that's you. already been taken care of or you'll get something similar. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Um, can we just get a, um, a note? I'd like to table this item, but before we do the, before we entertain a motion at the table, is it possible to get a, um, you know, because I don't want this to just kind of lay out there, you know, get an update uh, before the budget comes down on the status? I think, um, I don't know, today's, we're in April. Right. Just a May update on the status. So can we just do a motion <coughs> to, to get an update from the Chief Financial Officer on the status of the, the fire department and its staffing for I don't know, May, May 15th. So move. Second. Motion should remain second. Any discussion? Seeing on all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks. Uh, and any further questions for the chief of the? And I entertain a motion to table this item. So move. Second. I should remain second. Any discussion? Oh, no discussion on table item. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, Thank you, Chief. Uh, Councilors, I'd like to take document 8013 80, um, out of order. So moved. Second. Motion remains second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Yeah, you have it. Councilors, 8013 is review and acceptance of grants awarded to the City of Lawrence Community Development Department 2010, the, late the lead abatement grant. This is $3 million. And health home grant, which is $100,000, which is a total of $3,100,000. This was on the agenda by James H. Barnes, Community Development Director. Just real quick, these looks like two different um, numbers, Mr. Arnell. Do we need two votes, or is all one vote? I think uh, I don't have the uh, document in front of me, but it's it's. I believe it's a grant agreement for a hundred thousand, isn't it? Well, the first one's for three. Point three point one million, but it just has two components to it. I got you. So I don't need to do two right. votes. It should be. Uh, I think one vote should be fine. Is that how you? I think the order before you has the. Yes, it does say. Uh, has been awarded a lead abatement grant of $3 million and a healthy homes grant of $100,000 from the U.S. Housing and Urban Development Department. So it is one grant award, just two components to it. Director Barnes, how are you doing this evening? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Very well, thank you. Tell us a little bit about this grant. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, the... Um, each one of these three uh, uh, groups tonight are, uh, in essence, uh, uh, cleanup work uh, at the advice of the uh, uh, Director of uh, Budget and Finance. Uh, in order to get these older grants into the MUNIS system, uh, we needed to make sure that we went back and, and, made, and got them accepted uh, uh, by City Council. So this, and we've grouped them into categories. Uh, the first one is the lead abatement grant uh, and the healthy homes grant uh, for a total of $3.1 million that came to us in one uh, grant award from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development in uh, late 2010. And it's uh, a three-year grant from uh, March 1st of 2011 to February 28th of 2014. It's uh, currently uh, in um, execution. Uh, by the end of the grant period, we will have treated uh, at least 250 units of housing and uh, provided lead paint remediation. Um, the uh, Healthy Homes component provides uh, primarily bathroom ventilation to combat uh, mold uh, within uh, the same houses where we're doing lead remediation. Do the um do the, the applicants for the, for the lead abatement, 
um, subcontract out their own or do we provide them with contractors to do the work? We, we handle the contracting. We, we hand, handle the bidding process. Uh, we uh, issue a check uh, uh, made out to the contractor and to the uh, homeowner uh, or the investor owner. And you do that um, one at a time. You do that for each applicant. You do a separate bid process or do you do the, all of them? We, we batch them uh, we, um, based on uh, uh, volume, based on uh, what we uh, think the, uh, the contracting community uh, can handle. Uh, and we try to phase things out uh, you know, based on uh, what our grant agreement calls for. We don't want to do too few because it's inefficient. We don't want to do uh, too many too fast uh, because uh, we likely would not uh, have the, the capacity to, to watch over a large number of, of, uh, of contracts. We, we typically it's, and I'm joined by, by, by Sue Fink, our uh, director of, um, manager of uh, finance and administration, so Sue might be able to help me more with that. But I, I think typically we um, uh, have between seven and 11 uh, jobs that we bid out um, mm -hmm. on a regular basis. Now we do have, um we do have a, a lot of companies that do this work in the city. Are we using city contractors for that? We, we try to use city contractors. We, uh, we uh, have an open um, uh, advertisement out uh, for qualified contractors and uh, a significant number of contractors uh, are city contractors, but frankly, in my opinion, not as many as we would like. Each contractor has to uh, have uh, a certain number of certifications and licenses. Uh, and uh, we continually look for more city contractors. And uh, for those who are watching on, on cable, uh, if you're a contractor and not participating, take a look at our website and please contact us. We have about 15 qualified contracting companies now. We, we easily could, could handle uh, more participating. Yeah, hopefully it'll drive down the price, right, too? It might drive down the price too. But it, it, might it, it, it might, but we, we certainly uh, we have enough business uh, to accommodate more contractors. Is there a it, specific site on the website, or is it just CityLawrence.com? It's within the Community Development Department, and uh, within Community Development, look for the lead abatement uh, program, and there's information there about uh, how to uh, who to contact within our department, uh, and. Uh, we'd provide an application form to the contracting company. Basically, they have to give us references and give us uh, copies of their licenses. Mm -hmm. uh, they have to be trained and, and certified in lead abatement under um, a state certification process, state licensing. So if somebody Googles and does a search on the web for City of Lawrence lead abatement program, they're probably City of Lawrence Mass lead abatement program, they'll probably get the site. Um, or they can go to cityoflawrence.com and go to the department, community development department, and look for lead abatement. Uh, that's correct. Okay. Councilors, any discussion, any questions on this matter? Just a <coughs> Councilor Toomey? Yeah. Um, Mr. Barnes, this is, is this a three-year grant that goes between March 1st, 2011 and February 28, 2014? Yes, it is, sir. 36 months. So the total amount is $3.1 million? Yes. Oh, okay. Now, I was looking at some of the um, breakdown over here where you talk about salaries, travel supplies, professional services, healthy home interventions, direct costs, and indirect costs. Um, the salaries recover, the salaries reference, represents who are these? Community development? Uh, the salaries represent uh, members of the community development staff. Okay. And that's travel supplies. Professional services. Professional services are uh, consultants, uh, lead inspectors that we have to hire uh, that uh, is required for the grant. Each uh, uh, job has to have a series of inspections uh, done by a, a licensed professional. And uh, a good portion of that uh, uh, work is under this particular budget. And we do a, each, each, uh, each time we have a grant, we do a competitive uh, bid process to select uh, a qualified uh, contractor to do that. To do the, to do the inspection? Yes. OK. 
Okay, so, so and, uh, if I understand it correctly, as you go through the lead removal processing, at certain stages they have inspectors that come through, is that what it is? That's okay. correct. Okay. We do, we, we, we do uh, the inspector does uh, visual inspection and does dust wipes. Uh, they send the results of their inspection to a state lab. The report comes back. If it comes back uh, negative, then the, uh, uh, the, the site is considered clean. Uh, and the contractor can continue to the next step, or if it's the final um, version, then the, um, uh, we can uh, issue the final check. The, uh, uh, the family, if they've uh, been temporarily displaced while the work is being um, undertaken, can move back into, the, um, in, into their uh, unit. Uh, if, on the other hand, it comes back positive, uh, then the, uh, the contractor has to pay a, a cost for that particular test and, because it has to be retested. And uh, uh, we and the, um, the consultant uh, advise the contractor of remedial action, uh, which it, it usually involves uh, more intense cleanup after a job. Okay. Uh, the uh, direct cost, that would be the cost to the um, contractor? The direct costs are the actual rehabilitation costs. Okay. And indirect costs? I'm not um, uh, versed in, in uh, if, if that's a cost to us or to another part of the program. I'll ask Susan if uh, she can help me. <laughs> Good evening, counselors. Um, Susan Fink, Six Rockwood Lane. Um, indirect costs. Under this particular grant program covers any training that our staff has to go to. It covers a small portion of our overhead in the department um, and any marketing and outreach that we do. The, um, Mr. Barnes mentioned that if the inspection goes through and it comes back negative, that the contractor who's doing the lead removal has to go back over and do it over again? Is that correct? It's positive. If it's positive, if, if, if uh, the, um, and I might be misusing my terms, but if, uh, if the test is, is done and it, uh, it shows that there's still lead present, then the contractor is uh, not paid and is called to, um, uh, to remedy whatever the, um, the situation is. And uh, that's, that's typically uh, inadequate cleanup afterwards. Mm -hmm. um, the, the house uh, has to be totally dust free of any, any kind of dust that was created as a, as a result of the rehab process. And, and any of us have gone through rehabilitation know that uh, uh, there's inevitably some sandings, and, and if, if you don't fully clean it up, uh, that's not allowed under a lead abatement program, and that's what we're testing for. Okay, and the people that are uh, displaced while this is going on, is uh, their cost of wherever they go, is that part of this grant too? It is. Uh, it's part of the grant, and, and we uh, offer a, a, a stipend, a cash stipend, that, uh, uh, and we recommend... Um, that uh, if uh, the occupants have family, friends in the area, that uh, they temporarily room with them for a few days and uh, we'll provide a, a stipend for that to help with shared groceries and, and, and things like that. Also, in, um, in certain cases, we'll, uh, we have a, we'll have a contract with a, a motel uh, to, uh, uh, to put someone up for period of time. Do these these um, removals, does it take a lot of time to do it? I mean, what are you talking like? Maybe a couple of days, a couple of weeks, a couple of months? Well, an, an entire rehab job may take, uh, the, the actual time on site uh, might be just a few days, okay. but from the time that um, you uh, go out and do specifications and you bid out the job, that, that's uh, typically uh, a few weeks to a month. Uh, and then awarding it and then uh, the, um, uh, the contractor uh, will get set up and uh, it may take just a few days 
uh, to a couple weeks, uh, and then there's some inspections. So there'll be a few days, at least maybe a week, when a, a person is out of their house, when when the uh, uh, certain aspects of the um, uh, of the rehabilitation is being undertaken. Right. Also, there's uh, just if, if I could, there's there's certain kinds of rehabilitation that lead abatement that would not require that someone be displaced. Uh, for instance, if the lead is on the exterior of the house, if there's uh, no creation of, of hazards within the house, and, and we're just doing a residing or repainting to uh, reduce lead, then uh, we would not uh, necessarily displace a, a person temporarily in that case. Thank you very much. Thank you. Council, any other questions on the matter? Um, is it possible that we can get to, how, how long have we been getting these, these grants for the late abatement? We've been in, in uh, um, a very good position. We, we uh, received a, a similar grant um, uh, prior to this, um, another three-year grant, and we've just applied for a, a three-year grant that would uh, begin hopefully next year or three years. Great. So, so this is the, the third such grant, uh, and uh, we've uh, developed a, a really good uh, record uh, within the state. Uh, the HUD headquarters in Washington just asked us to uh, provide mentoring to staff from the city of Worcester mm -hmm. with le their lead program. So we often are visited by, uh, by other cities uh, for, for assistance. And it's something that we're proud of. Well, I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad you guys are running on all cylinders. Any shot that we can get a list of the, the contractors that were participated in the grant either last year or currently? Yes, no, we'd be happy That'd to be provide awesome. that. Thanks. And that could be email, spreadsheet, however you guys want to do it. I'd be happy to do that. Councilor, any other discussions on the matter? Seeing none, is there any uh, motion, motion to, to send, send this up? Motion to up to the full council with a positive recommendation. Motion has been made. Second. Second. Motion Second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Officer's document, can I take document number 8113 out of order? So moved. This review. Second. Motion to be made. Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Review and acceptance of grants awarded to the City of Lawrence Community Development Department Community Health Initiative Project, $100,000 from Dana-Farber Cancer Institute Project Impact, $56,000. And the Dana Farber Cancer Institute project clear sixteen thousand two hundred dollars. Altogether, it's one hundred seventy-two thousand two hundred dollars. Uh, this is put, also put on the agenda by Director Barnes, Community Development Department. Mr. Barnes, can you explain a little about, about this grant? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, we, uh, in our department, have been hosting the Mayor's Health Task Force uh, for several years, and the Mayor's Health Task Force is dedicated to uh, combating health disparities within. Uh, the city of Lawrence. The uh, health task force is uh, primarily a, uh, a large collaborative of public health interests, all of whom volunteer uh, their time or uh, participate on the time that's been paid for by, uh, by the organization they work for, a nonprofit organization, a hospital, so forth and so on. Um, However, there are certain additional programs that uh, health organizations would like to fund in the city of Lawrence, and these are represented on this group tonight. And also, uh, we have found a need to coordinate all this work, and we uh, do that coordination in a contract that we've uh, awarded to the YWCA and uh, through an RFP process. And uh, these three grants provide for a portion of that coordination work, annual coordination work, by the YWCA under contract with us. And also they provide uh, some uh, particular uh, program activity, director of program activity. For instance, uh, Dana-Farber Cancer Institute is providing training uh, to citizens of uh, Lawrence under the Project Impact Program to um, uh, provide uh, expertise in uh, dealing with the media on health issues. And a portion of uh, this um, Project Impact grant 
is used to provide that training and to pay for the trainers, and another portion is, is used for coordination purposes. Uh, Dana Farber Cancer Institute is also uh, under Project Clear, is uh, doing focus group uh, here in Lawrence to determine what kind of graphics are uh, most appropriate uh, to go on cigarette packs. Uh, this is funding that the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute receives from national organizations and they've chosen, they have uh, uh, opportunities and directives to work in local communities and they've chosen to work uh, in the city of Lawrence, uh, which helps us uh, in, in uh, dealing with public health issues. The $100,000 uh, Community Health Initiative Project is $20,000 per year from uh, the Massachusetts Department of Public Health uh, to uh, specifically provide for coordination of the Mayor's Health Task Force. There's no programs related to that. Councilors, any questions? Seeing and I entertain, entertain a motion to send us up the full council of favor recommendation. So move. Second. Motion being seconded. Any further discussion? Seeing on all those in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Council would like to take document number 8213 out of order. So move. Second. 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 Motion being seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 The ayes have it. Council's document 8213 review and acceptance of grants award to the City of Lawrence Community Development Department 2010. HMIS. Two grant fifty three thousand three hundred forty five dollars twenty thousand eleven uh, sorry two thousand eleven M H I S two grant fifty three thousand three forty five again and then the two thousand eleven H M I S grant uh, twelve thousand four hundred and sixteen dollars for a total of one hundred nineteen dollars one hundred nineteen thousand one hundred six dollars this was put on the agenda by Director Barnes Community Development Department um, with these dates before you start Director Barnes. Um, did we spend this money already? No, we haven't. Um, this, uh, the, the um, we've spent some of it, but not all of it. And uh, the the uh, the dates relate to the HUD appropriations date. So uh, we may get a 2010 grant in 2011 or 2012 uh, because they appropriate the money in one fiscal year, and then HUD spends it in the next fiscal year. Uh, so uh, these are relatively recent grants uh, and uh, ones that we have uh, we had received in the past uh, from HUD. Uh, we are still um, in the midst of at least one of these three grants. I sued to tell which one. The, the 2010 HMIS-2 is under contract right now, for instance. Uh, the purpose of this HMIS stands for Housing Management Information System, and the, uh, the federal legislation that creates the grant programs for dealing with homelessness uh, in America has a very uh, strict protocol for managing, uh, uh, for accumulating and managing data. Uh, it, it began with the concern that um, uh, homeless individuals or families might be receiving uh, more assistance uh, or assistance from more than one agency, more than one entity within uh, the Commonwealth or any state or within a community, and there needed to be some way in a very confidential manner to, to track uh, the utilization of, of funds. Uh, the second reason is that uh, this has become an extremely high priority for um, uh, both Democrats and Republicans, and so in a bipartisan effort, uh, there's been a push to obtain really good data, and uh, both uh, uh, Republican and Democratic uh, presidents have had goals of, of ending homelessness in, in America. And so in order to, to do that, they've uh, developed strict uh, data management protocols. Luckily for us, in addition to, this is one of the few mandates that happens to be funded. So uh, one of the very few where they say you have to uh, have these database systems, uh, very complicated. You have to require that all of your small participating homeless organizations participate, uh, but we'll provide you with some funds uh, to 
to assist. And so uh, with this funding, we've um, done a request for proposals and, and, and have an expert in uh, data management um, uh, under contract uh, to provide assistance both to the city and to the nonprofit organizations. Do we do an annual count like they do in Boston for the homeless? We this do. Level? Who does it? Uh, we've, uh, we help coordinate that, that annual count, and it's uh, been done uh, uh, for the last two years uh, with um, uh, the Daybreak Shelter uh, and the Psychological Center providing the leadership and coordination and our participation. Uh, the final reports have to be collected uh, by our department, and uh, in addition to all of Susan's financial management responsibilities, uh, Sue also uh, uh, coordinates the entire continuum of care process with all the nonprofits. So uh, the data comes from the individual organizations to Sue and then finally uh, reported to HUD. Is uh, that's a short version. It's a little bit more complicated. Yeah, I got to think it is. Um, is there a reason why we don't make a bigger deal about the count like they do in Boston? Uh, when I when I first started, we in, in 2008, 2009, uh, we uh, tried to make it a little bit bigger deal. One of the things that we found uh, is that um, the really good news is that the number of homeless persons living outside when the count has to be done is relatively small. And um, uh, they are, have been living in uh, one or two locations uh, underneath the bridge. And we are um, making a very strong effort to create uh, homeless or, I'm sorry, housing or shelter uh, alternatives for living outside. But the number uh, after, um, in 2008, 2009, we had extensive participation with the police department. We. Um, um, had large uh, groups of citizens, and we found that, at least in my opinion, it was um, not time well served because uh, uh, the numbers were relatively small. Mm -hmm. now, Is there a reason why you do it in the time when there's less people outside? It's, uh, it's a national survey. It's, it's one point in time, and it, the decision was made uh, nationally to, to do that. Uh, it's not, for, those living in, in uh, the Northeast, it's not a good time. Um, and uh, we, we recognize that. So we know that, we know that our numbers are gonna be a little bit less than if we did it in uh, June or July. And we- I think you'd find that there's other places too. I think in, you know, in the summer, there are other places where people can go and find and make makeshift shelter that's not just under the bridges. Anyhow, sorry, I know that we're not supposed to, I just thought. No, it's, it's, you know, it's a tough issue. A and count. Councilors, any other questions about this matter? So this, uh, excuse me, this, um, Councilor Toomey. This whole grant is dealing with basically data collecting? That's correct. And what do they do with the data? Just show we, uh, people and, and I'll ask Sue if she wants to help or if, or if you want me to keep on going. <laughs> I'll keep on going until I uh, crash and burn. Uh, gotta not give them, you got to not give them an option. That's how you do it. <laughs> the, um, uh, the data is uh, reported into national databases. Uh, as, as I said, Congress and uh, the administration nationally have uh, a strong interest in um, changing uh, the numbers here and um, eliminating homelessness. Uh, there are uh, specific data requirements that are established by the national legislation. So uh, our data goes into, uh, we have a, an agreement with the state and uh, the state maintains uh, their uh, database, the database system that, that gets reported into HUD. There's a requirement for annual uh, performance reports by each community and by each uh, nonprofit organization that participates in um, uh, homeless programs. Uh, that 
report has to be, uh, have a level of accuracy. Uh, the uh, folks that review this data look for improvements, look for results. Uh, one of the results that we're looking for is uh, gradually the elimination of shelters. We'd like to, uh, there's a national effort to go to a housing first model where housing is provided with wraparound uh, services, for instance. And um, so if we can eliminate uh, the number of uh, emergency shelter beds in a community, uh, that's considered a, uh, an accomplishment. Uh, the state has a, a, a statewide effort to um, eliminate the number of uh, hotel rooms used to shelter homeless. And so all this, um, there's uh, lots of data collected and we'd be happy to, uh, to share with you a couple of the input forms so you can see that it's, it's not just one or two lines, it's a significant amount of, of inputting. And if a nonprofit organization um, makes some uh, mistakes, uh, then that council gets them in, in future funding. So there's, there's benefits to our providing the assistance that we're providing under this grant. So you come up with numbers on how many homeless there are in different areas, right? Through this data collection, you come up with the number of homeless people in this particular area, you submit that data, right? Is that correct? Yes. And the data goes to some, some uh, data collection agency in, in Washington, I assume. And its purpose is just to find out how many people are homeless? Well, the, the purpose is to measure uh, uh, success, uh, to measure the level of performance by uh, the, uh, the nation as a whole, by states, and by individual communities. And so it's, it's an effort to, as I said, to measure success. Uh, it's built into the legislation in, in the ways that maybe some other um, uh, laws don't have a, a, a built-in performance standards. But the <laughs> Sue's gonna add something to it. <laughs> well, no, the, uh, I guess I'm looking to see, like, e even though you have all this data, I assume the, uh, the reason in back of all this is to try and reduce homelessness, right? So it something is, yes. must have to happen in order for that to happen. Right, and what the national data will then show trends in homelessness. For example, if there's an uptick in the number of unaccompanied children that are homeless, programs can be designed to address that need. If there is an uptick in the number of veterans who are homeless, they can design programs to provide housing and services to keep these, these folks housed. Okay, so it's... It, it's not it, just counting how many we have, but what types and how can we design the programs to help these particular types of homeless individuals the, the, or families become housed. And, and the, pro, the programs that are designed are uh, in some way or other, are, uh, money is given to a particular area to, to help get these things going? That's, yes, there's an annual thing? competition that we, we participate in and each of the agencies um, that deal with homelessness in the area apply for funding each year. And the funding is for? Is through HUD. Um, for example, the YWCA, for example, gets funding for the domestic violence program, the OASIS project. They get funding for the FINA house project, which deals with um, individuals with disabilities. Um, they have their teen living program. Neighborhood uh, Legal Services gets funding to help um, folks that are in, imminently in danger of losing their housing, which would then make them homeless. So there are different agencies in the city that get funding. I guess I guess what I'm looking for is uh, if you if you have a particular situation within within your within the confines of your, of your city, for instance, to teen pregnancy, for instance, right? Mm -hmm. You say they get funding for what? Trying to reduce teen, teen Correct, pregnancy yes. in an area, so it's more of, a, more of an educational type thing versus uh, what? 
Well, they, these, house, these programs are all dealing with homelessness, so we would be getting people into housing, getting them off the streets or, or out of shelters. Okay, so the purpose is to get them off the streets and into, Correct, yes. into some, some sort of some sort of housing, housing. be it a rooming house or congregate living or and whatever that's, seems that's appropriate. At the cost, that's at the cost of the, of the federal government? It is, yes. Hmm. There's about $600,000 approximately each year that comes to agencies from HUD to deal with the homeless issues in Lawrence. Okay, now this... Um, does that money take care of these shelters that currently exist? That the that money only shelter that gets funding in Lawrence is Daybreak Shelter. Oh, I'm sorry, they don't even get funding. They get state funding. They don't get funding from the federal government. They don't get funding from what? They don't get funding from the federal government, Daybreak. They get funding from the state. From the state? Does the state get the money from the federal? I, I'm not sure where they're funding. I'm just curious, you know, this, this is just a... Curiosity type thing on my part. I just want to get a clarification for. Less and less of the uh, the funds uh, available to shelters is coming from the federal government. It may be coming from the state government. Uh, much of it's uh, done through fundraising, uh, but the federal government has been moving for uh, at least four years, uh, probably eight years, towards. Uh, providing various forms of, of housing uh, for homeless uh, individuals and moving away from the shelter program. So shelters are still needed. Uh, they still exist. Uh, there are some excellent ones uh, here in the Merrimack Valley, including in Lawrence. Uh, they uh, each have to do fundraising uh, in addition to receiving some small amounts from the state. Uh, so it's, um, it, it's a tough environment for, for shelters because uh, the needs continue to be great. Mm, right. right. Thank you very much. <coughs> I'm all set. Thank you. Apologize for that. You'll let us know when you guys are having the next count. At least let us, I'll, I'd like to know when the count's going on, just to see what it looks like. It's the, generally the last Wednesday in January. Last Jan Wednesday in January? But you'll send us an email, right? Because my memory's not that good. <laughs> Um, motion to send it up with a positive recommendation. Second. Well, motion has been made. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. You guys have it. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. <coughs> Councilors, document 6913. I'd like to, I would put this on the agenda. Uh, I'd just like to table it for the moment. Motion to table. Second. 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 Motion to Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. You guys have it. Document number 7713. Also, um, I didn't do any correspondence around this, so I'd like to table that for the next one. Motion to table. Second. Motion remain seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Yes, have it. Uh, 7813, I didn't make any uh, correspondence on this, but I think that, if I'm not mistaken, do you, Director Arnella, if you're, are you available to talk about this just a little bit now, maybe prepare more f document for later on, or do you have documents for us this evening? I don't, again, I apologize. I didn't make any correspondence around this matter, but. Right. Well, uh, I, uh, uh, documents were, were sent back in a few months ago, so I mean, if you need uh, a, a new statements, certainly you can get those, but those uh, were provided uh, uh, some, somewhere around January, some mid-January or so. Uh, so what I, what I presented was um, uh, financial statements, uh, revenues and, and expenditures for each of the, uh, the general fund and all the enterprise funds. Uh, so it's a document that you know, 30 or so pages long. You know what? We don't. I don't. I don't have it, and I okay. probably have yep. to go back to look at it. And I wouldn't put it on the spot to review it now. So, uh, can we just make a uh, a note to come back next, the next budget and finance committee, and review it with us? Sure. And just resend that to us so we can yep. make sure we have it. Um, and just CC the clerk so she makes sure she prints it out, and puts it in our packet. Actually, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna back step on that. Can we just get it to? Mm -hmm. the, the clerk now, sometime today, sometime eat it to, so that it gets inside the packet mm -hmm. for the Budget and Finance Subcommittee? Because it, having it in the email is not the same as having it printed out in the Budget and Finance Subcommittee packet. Mm -hmm. It's easier. That way it's always going to get printed. So we'll do that for um, the meeting of the 23rd. The 
which might not be on the 23rd, but it'll be on that week sometime. Thanks for the patience on that. I'll, I'll bring it down uh, uh, a set to the clerk in the morning. Yeah, just making sure that it gets inside the packet. Yep. Um, Council, to entertain a motion to table this that matter for the evening. So moved. Motion to remain second it. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Council, anything else on the agenda you'd like to take off the table? Motion to adjourn. Motion made to adjourn. Second. Is there a second? Motion made second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. The ayes have it.